The first clinical trial of smallpox vaccines were done on six prisoners who were on a death row. Smallpox caps were sprinkled into the guts of the inmates at Newgate Prison, London in 1721. And the terms of this trial were pretty straightforward. If you die, you die anyways, but if you survive, the king would pardon you. And this was called the Royal Experiment. All six prisoners agreed to have the trial on them. All six survived and then released. By 1746, a smallpox inoculation hospital was set up. Immunization is as old as humanity. For as long as we've existed, humankind has had to deal with infectious diseases. Smallpox, influenza and polio, these are just a few examples which have killed countless numbers of people over time. The history of vaccines comes directly from this experience. Smallpox affected all levels of society. But before we move on, don't forget to subscribe and press the bell icon for more such content. In the 18th century in Europe, 40,000 people died annually of smallpox and one-third of the survivors went blind. The symptoms of smallpox or the speckled monster as it was known in the 18th century England appeared suddenly and the residual were devastating. The case fatality varied from 20% to 60% and left most survivors with disfiguring scars. The case fatality rate in infants was even higher, approaching 80% in London and 98% in Berlin during the late 1800s. In the late 1700s, rural England dairy farmers had been noticing small pimples full of pus in the cows that later came to be known as cowpox. Cowpox is much milder and the cow did not die from it. The milkmaids too sometimes caught cowpox from milking these cows. People started noticing that milkmaids did not catch smallpox when an outbreak came around. So people already knew that if someone caught cowpox, then they became immune to smallpox. It was like a miracle and people started experimenting with themselves by injecting cowpox pus directly into their body. But then they started to have negative effects. In 1796, the scientist Edward Jenner, also known as the father of immunology, comes to the picture. Jenner had the idea to take cowpox pus from a milkmaid, a human, instead directly from a cow, a human to human transfer. He used the cow pus from a milkmaid and he scrapped it on an eight year old boy, his gardener's son. Then about two months later, he exposed the kid to smallpox and the kid did not get it. This was huge. You can't die of cowpox because it is a mild disease and you become immune to smallpox, a deadly disease without any cure. The 8-year-old was inoculated against the disease and this became the first ever vaccine. His method underwent medical and technological changes over the next 200 years and eventually resulted in the eradication of smallpox in 1980. When someone gets infected by a disease, the antigen causing the disease, that is, whatever the body recognizes as foreign, a virus or a bacteria, is the pathogenic etiological organism that gets into the body and acts as an antigen. Once an antigen is inside the body, it stimulates the immune system to develop antibodies. Antibodies are the immunoglobulins that fight the infection in a specific way. That's why they are called antigens. They are antibody generating molecules. To understand how vaccine vaccines function, we need to know how the immune system defends us against contagious diseases in the first place. When foreign microbes invade us, the immune system triggers a series of responses in an attempt to identify and remove them from our bodies. The signs that this immune response is working are coughing, sneezing, inflammation and fever that we experience, which work to trap, deter and rid the body of threatening things like bacteria. These innate immune responses also trigger our second second line of defense called adaptive immunity. The body takes time to learn how to respond to pathogens and to build up to these defenses. But what if we could prepare the body's immune response before someone even got ill? This is where vaccines come in. Using the same principle the body uses to defend itself, scientists use vaccine to trigger the body's adaptive immune system without exposing humans to the full strength of the disease. This has resulted in many vaccines which each work uniquely, separated into many different types. 
Scientists are now building a whole new range of vaccines called DNA vaccines. For this variety, they isolate the very genes that make the specific antigens the body needs to trigger its immune response to specific pathogens. When injected into the human body, those genes instruct cells in the body to make the antigens. This causes a stronger immune response and prepares the body for any future threats. And because the vaccine only includes specific genetic material, it does not contain any other ingredients from the rest of the pathogen that could develop into the disease and harm the patient. With the outbreak of coronavirus, uncertainty and confusion are bounded. The chaos and misjudgments ring a similar tune that of 100 years ago when a new infectious disease had swept the world. The influenza epidemic, also known as Spanish flu during the World War I. Nancy Bristow, author of the book American Pandemic, The Lost Worlds of the 1918 Influenza Epidemic, explores how much we have changed in our approach to such deadly virus and how we are dealing with the current pandemic a century later. According to her, the best way to deal with the pandemic this time around might be to be a bit more sensitive, a bit more culturally aware and perhaps embracing a sort of world citizenship. If you like our content, don't forget to like, share and subscribe. You can ask and suggest us anything on our Facebook, Instagram or in the comment section below.